الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters Nobody can achieve contentment until they spend from that which is very, very close to their hearts, from that which they love, from that which is very dear to them, that which is material, obviously. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in verse number 92 of Surah Ali Imran, Allah says, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ you will not achieve righteousness until and unless you spend from that which you love. What do you love? Whether it comes to your wealth, whether it comes to something you're deeply connected to, or even just your time, subhanAllah, people love their time. Are you going to spend it in the right cause? Are you going to spend that time with Allah? Are you going to spend that time with your family members, with others? If you do, you will achieve contentment. If you don't, perhaps you will lose that contentment. When attachment to something material becomes too much, you lose contentment. Because contentment is the ownership of Allah. He will give it to whomsoever is close to him. You want to become close to Allah? Don't get too close to that which is besides Allah. Yes, we love our cars, we love our houses, we love our clothes, we love our accessories, we love a few things, but that love should never exceed the love of the Almighty. The Almighty's love is first. When it's time for prayer, everything can wait. When it's halal and haram, we need to make sure we do the right thing. When it comes to the timings, we need to make sure we prioritize. When it comes to family, they come first. We have this rule that we need to follow regarding the con regarding the connection that we have with material items. It should never be more than our love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why this verse is of utmost importance. I'd like to move on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 103 of Surah Al Imran. Hold fast, hold fast on the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't be disunited. Don't let go, don't be disunited. The importance of unity. Unity comes about with a lot of sacrifice. If you're going to sacrifice, you will achieve unity. If you're not going to sacrifice, you're not going to achieve unity. There is give and take. You need to have a big heart. You need to forgive. You need to embrace. You need to tolerate. That's when you will achieve unity. Unity is not uniformity. You don't have to think the same, like the same things, etc. You need to respect one another and tolerate each other. The differences we may have, yes, we allow those differences because at the end of the day, it's Allah who is going to judge us. I am not the one who's going to judge. If we look at Surah Al-Fatiha, the first Surah that we spoke about, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says He is the owner of the Day of Judgment. Maliki Yawmiddin. The owner of the Day of Judgment, He has set aside a day to judge. If we begin to judge people, we will never achieve contentment because people will judge us, we will judge them, each one dooms the other and that's it. We've lost contentment because we made others lose their contentment. Remember, if you'd like success and contentment, you need to know the owner of judgment is actually Allah. We may judge based on something we don't even know and we may make big mistakes in that regard. So learn to look at people with the eye of goodness, the eye of positivity, the eye uh, of love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. The issue of unity and the issue of judging people, these are very important issues that we need to take heed of if we'd like to achieve the contentment and the happiness that we are searching for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la ta'kulu riba O you who believe, don't consume usually and interest. Don't consume it. In fact, the verse immediately after that in Surah Ali Imran, verse number 131, Allah says, Be conscious of or be fearful of the fire that is prepared for those who disbelieve, those who have not taken heed of the verses of the Almighty, those who are ungrateful. In fact, Al-Kafirin includes the term ungrateful or those who are ungrateful. They show ingratitude. 
So when Allah's warned us, the warning is simply to bring us to the straight path. Remember that. The warning of Allah, it's not that He is merciless. He is merciful. Out of His mercy, He warns people. It's like if we had a little child and we told the child, be careful, I will reprimand you. The idea is not the reprimanding. The idea is the correction of the child and the idea is to ensure the child succeeds. Similarly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He warns us but he, His mercy encompasses uh, everything to the degree that if we were to take heed, we would be saved from what he's warning us about. As simple as that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. This topic is about usury. It's a very deep topic. Why is interest haram and why is usury prohibited? That is not our topic. But if we stay away from it, we will achieve contentment. Imagine you stay away from eating that which Allah has made prohibited you will achieve contentment. And this is why Allah says, those who've made mistakes, turn to me before it's too late. So while the warnings are issued of the fire, and that's, that's something we have to talk about at times. Every religion speaks about how a person may be cast in hellfire if they were to transgress and so on. At the same time, what we need to know is, Allah says, if you have done wrong, turn to Allah. He will forgive you. Just listen to these beautiful verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Follow Allah and follow His Messenger in order that you achieve rahma, the mercy, the contentment, the happiness. What should you do? Follow Allah, follow His Rasul. Subhanallah. وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that you will achieve the mercy. Then Allah says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ He's warned us about the punishment. Then he says, make haste towards the, the forgiveness of Allah and the paradise. Do deeds that will earn the forgiveness of Allah and let you get into Jannah. That's what I want. What about those who've done wrong? So immediately after that, in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh, those who have transgressed against themselves by committing immorality and evil, they may have committed adultery and whatever else. Allah says, if they remember Allah and seek forgiveness, for them is forgiveness. Not only forgiveness, but Allah will grant them paradise if they've changed their lives thereafter. What a beautiful uh, sense of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a great uh, encouragement for all of us to be able to earn the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who have done wrong, those who have committed sin, those who have committed immorality, if they remember Allah and they seek the forgiveness of Allah, they're the ones, if they've changed their lives thereafter to become good people, they are the ones who will be earning Jannah. And Jannah paradise was prepared for those type of people. Amazing. And this is why at the end Allah encourages us to do something very interesting. If you really want contentment, again, verse number 130, uh, 135 of Surah Al-Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Exactly as I said earlier, those who have done wrong, transgressed against themselves, committed immorality, if they remembered Allah and sought the forgiveness of Allah, Allah will forgive them. Allah will wipe their sins out. Allah will give them the contentment, not just in this world, but even in the next, which is more important. Imagine contentment and happiness in this world, contentment and happiness in the next. It goes from a dua of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that meaning dua that Allah has made mention of in the Quran. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ O oh, our Rabb, grant us goodness in this world, grant us goodness in the hereafter, and save us from the punishment of the fire. That's the punishment of the fire we're asking Allah to save us from. And at the same time, we're asking for two goodnesses, the goodness in this world, the contentment of this world, the goodness of the hereafter, the contentment and the happiness of the hereafter. In order to achieve that, you need to spend in the path of Allah as well. Spending in the cause of Allah, whenever there are needy people, a needy cause, something good to be done, dig deep into your pockets, give, and Allah will grant you happiness. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. 
الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين one of my favorite verses listen to what allah says those who spend secretly quietly no one knows you did it silently you helped someone you spent in a good cause you spent for the sake of Allah and those who spend even openly it's fine if people knew what you spent and it's fine if you even allowed people to know with with the intention of encouraging them perhaps if they see me spending perhaps they would spend too if that was your intention alhamdulillah Allah says you know those who are good muhsinin are the good the doers of good Allah says they spend quietly in secret and openly and you know what else they do kadhimin al-ghayth they swallow their anger they suppress their anger if you suppress your anger, you will achieve more contentment than if you were to vent it. And if you were to just let it go and do whatever you wish. No, you don't. You do what Allah wishes. Allah says, we know you'll become angry at some stage. Don't worry, calm down for our sake. So we will not get angry with you because you did not get angry with others. And this is something very interesting. Allah's mercy descends upon those who are merciful. You show that mercy and the Almighty will show you the mercy. So Allah says, those who can extinguish and suppress their anger at that moment, they will definitely, definitely achieve goodness. Goodness includes the contentment we're talking about. You want contentment? Calm down. Take it easy. And you know what Allah says? وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ Those who forgive people. If you forgive people, you are a good person. If you're a good person, you will achieve contentment. This is from the Quran. So my brothers and sisters, I ask you tonight and today to forgive people and to be more compassionate, to spend, whether it be in secret or openly, and to learn to suppress your anger, to control your temper, and I promise you, you will be a very, very content person. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب.